Welcome to the dungeon, this is Civi 11, and I love me some Romero zombie movies. I mean, I really like Night of the Living Dead, Dawn of the Dead, and Day of the Dead, but George Romero, father of the modern interpretation of zombies, didn't stop with three nearly perfect movies full of gore and social commentary. He kept making more that nobody asked for, including Diary of the Dead, Survival of the Dead, Conflict of the Dead, Escape from the Planet of the Dead, Black Friday of the Dead, Next Black Friday of the Dead, and also Land of the Dead. Land of the Dead is probably the best of these, but it's, uh, it's social commentary is somehow less subtle than Dawn of the Dead. We don't negotiate with terrorists. See, Johnny Legs here is gonna blow up their big tower, where all the rich people live. Hoffman's gonna pay me. If he doesn't, he knows I'm gonna do a jihad on his ass. Okay, yeah. I actually like Land of the Dead. It's silly, but it doesn't take itself too seriously. Has good gore, likable enough characters and performances. I'm not here to hate on George Romero. I deeply love the man. But not even he is immune to the curse of officially licensed shovelware games. So we get Land of the Dead, Road to Fiddler's Green, a prequel story to the movie. I'm gonna let this game speak for itself. So, you want to know how I got here? Yeah, I'll tell you my story. It's okay, I really don't care, I'm just here to shoot zombies. I just finished feeding the hogs when the power went out. That happens from time to time out here in the country. I tried calling the electric company, but the lines were dead. I didn't think too much of it at the time. Later that day, I noticed a stranger in my yard. Something wasn't right with him. The way he was just standing there. I think I'd rather look around first. Maybe find some kind of weapon since it's a foregone conclusion that it's a zombie. You might notice how there's always huge text on the screen. That doesn't go away. Hey, asshole, let me go out there and actually find out if that's a zombie. That's a situation rife with comedic possibilities. <laughs> oh, oh, okay, sorry, man. You were trying to knock, I guess. You want to come in and have a cup of brains? Fine, fuck you. I'm going to get liquored up and vote for Donald Trump. He'll take care of the zombies. He's very smart. He's a good businessman, and I have faith in his ability to make a great deal with the zombies. I'm sure he'll give them a tax cut, and they'll only get 70% of the brains. It's a smart deal. Talk him down 30% and make it look like you're doing them a favor. 3D chess, my friends! Okay, we're jumping to kill the strangers. I think that's what Mr. Rogers taught us. Okay, I've done this plenty of times before. You got your rifle here, you just aim for the head. It's a zombie, you can't lose. Bam! Okay, I, I guess I won't do it. It's only a 22, so shooting someone in the head with it might not be fatal. Okay, so not two, maybe three? No? Takes four shots to the head with this to waste a zombie. A fucking zombie. I'm noticing that I don't have any food in this house, just empty beer bottles. I can't open the basement door. Okay, fine, let me just... Okay, I can't open the other basement door. Now I run out of ammo, which the game seems to have anticipated. And I have to get to the shed to get my other gun. But I need the key to the shed, which is in my basement, which has a zombie in it. How is there a zombie in there? I can't get into the fucking basement from either entrance. How the fuck did he get in there? Yeah, okay, this might be a little academic, but I have to talk about the house and the brilliant way that Brainbox Games establishes our character through subtle and believable hints about his lifestyle told entirely through the mise-en-scene. This man's house has lost power, which he says is a common occurrence. His cabinets are completely bare. He sleeps in the upstairs hallway and has a bottle of pills next to his bed. His library has very few books in it and a toilet. And a medicine cabinet with five more bottles of prescription pills, likely painkillers. His bedroom also has two small desks, possibly meant for children, and two more cabinets with books in them. The only photo I can see on the wall is of a cow. He has a broken refrigerator in his attic next to the case where he keeps his rifle, and there's another child's desk in the corner. He doesn't keep a key to his basement or shed on him, instead keeping the shed key in a filing cabinet in the basement next to some large empty shelving units. Those kind of look like refrigerators, too. He keeps a magnum revolver in the shed so we can gather that we have a man who abuses both alcohol and prescription painkillers who at some point ran a kind of school, and the attic was where either the very good or the very bad kids went. His first instinct, or possibly a command from a force only perceptible to the farmer himself, is to kill strangers 
monsters that appear outside his home, and have presumably killed the pigs he claims to have, which don't appear in the game and are never referenced again as he goes on his adventure. Which means food for his pigs was not a concern. Now you've got a zombie, as in a reanimated corpse, coming out of the basement that was locked at both entrances. You have what looks like a lot of refrigeration equipment. I think we know what's going on here. Bad kids got fed to the pigs. We never go inside this other building on his property, that's where the pigs must be. And there must be food in there for them that will last a while. He just got done feeding them. I just finished feeding the hogs when the power went out. After all, this guy loves his animals, but I don't think he's too fond of people. So I get the gun from the shed, which is useful and can actually headshot properly. But ammo is a little scarce for it, so I'll use the hammer I found, which doesn't one hit, but the alternate fire will knock the zombies on their ass. But as they're getting up, they don't take damage. Only when they are completely upright, so no cheap shots while they're down. I get you. We're doing Mario rules in a zombie FPS game from 2005, sure. That makes sense. I killed the strangers. It was them or me. The poor devils looked like they fell in a septic tank and festered for a few days. I'd never killed no one before, so I sure was real spooked. Oh, I bet you never killed anyone. Me either. I decided to head over to my neighbors across the cornfield. Yes, the, uh, 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 the, uh, cornfield. Jesus. You know, this is Unreal Tech, same as last time. Look at that fog. Look at this entire map made of fucking hay bales. I really wanted to save ammo, so I just kept knocking them down, waiting, knocking them down again. These zombies, you can tell when you finally kill them, because they do the whole early 2000s ragdoll thing. Remember that? Oh. Those were good times. The AI in this game is, uh, subpar. And I mean subpar for zombies. I managed to get on top of one of these bales of hay, and I'm pretty sure I could have stayed there forever. The zombies didn't even notice me. I mean, is this thing that was sold for money? This is like one of those Steam Early Access zombie games. I don't have any footage for one of those games because I don't like flushing my money down the toilet or accidentally getting sued for 15 million dollars by <laughs> Look at this, it's like my legs don't even exist. Zombies only see the head. I think I found a perfect defensible position to survive the zombie apocalypse. My neighbors were dead. I didn't know what the heck was going on, and I was scared to death. For those of you tuning in, this is not a joke. Something has gone horribly, horribly wrong. Dramatic guncock is great, but if you really want to be intimidating, in this game, you gotta do it four times. I did what the man on the TV said and stayed on the farm as long as I could. Where did you get all those beans? They weren't there before. I searched that house really thoroughly, and this bean thing was really bothering me. So I restarted the game and went looking for the beans, and they're not in those cabinets. And also the cabinets don't exist. I think they cut the canned beans mission out. Luckily, they kept the sewer level in. I mean, how else do you get to the hospital? Ambulance? Roads? The surface? Fucking amateur. It's like my Uncle Frank used to say, you ain't living unless you got shit on your boots, boy. So yeah, this is the sewer level is so bland, so uninspired, so fucking dull, that it is the gold standard of terrible sewer levels. Except that it is kind of fun to see the zombies interact with water. I like this trick in games where you think it's a corpse, but it gets up and attacks you. This game likes it too. So much so that I'm gonna have to start counting them because they happen often enough for it to be a problem. So you go through the sewers to get to the hospital so you can find this guy, a doctor. And since this game doesn't have the budget for more voice actors, the farmer narrates. The doctor had come for supplies a few days ago. The men he was with were murdered by those living dead. Once the killing started, he locked himself in this room. It kept him safe, but now he couldn't get out. The doctor said that if I went to the basement, I could open the door by flicking an electrical switch down there. What I love about the switch hunting in this game is that the switches themselves aren't even animated. They don't even do red light, green light. They don't even move. Not a single switch in this game actually moves or does anything when you interact with it. 
outstanding. Switches don't work, but you can pick up any goddamn phone in the game and hear a dial tone. That's the important thing, that's where the realism comes in. I'm gonna give the game some credit. The body bags with zombies in them is a nice touch. I have a fire axe now, which may be the best melee weapon in the game, you know, if the hit detection in this game was worth a damn. Aim for the head, right? Well, you're more likely to just annoy the zombie or chop off one of their arms. I'm aiming for the head. You can clearly see that. You're trying to save ammo by meleeing a zombie, but the game decides, Nah, man, I'm just gonna let the zombie get a cheap hit in on you, even though you just put a fire axe through its face. This is a problem with the guns, too, and it turns out that if you aim slightly to the right of the head, you're more likely to get a headshot. That's funny to you, I bet, but I gotta play this shit. I've had games do that before, but usually the character had to be drunk or high or something, which is still a strong possibility. We're eating a lot of pills, probably to try to stave off the DTs. Just to be clear, this is a zombie game where the zombies are extra stupid, and the historically foolproof method of killing zombies is completely broken. You might see some zombies carrying weapons or tools, and while a headshot is lethal to an unarmed zombie, you need to put five or six shots into an armed zombie. Because video games. The zombies alternate between being strong enough to break down doors, to being strong enough to break down walls. In a game with such simple, no, the absolute simplest combat and enemy AI you can aim for, having it be so goddamn inconsistent, it's just, it's just, I don't understand. Why does it sound like the zombies are ripping pieces of duct tape off when they attack? Is that supposed to be your clothes ripping? <laughs> it's really distracting. Aside from unarmed zombie and armed zombie, you will also face puke zombie. Puke zombie is different because there's a green cloud around them, and they can make your health bar go away and fuck up your vision. So that's three enemy types, basically, and that's it. You want to know what a boss looks like in this game? There. You might not believe it, but this game has a stamina meter. You can't see it, but it's there. When you sprint for a little while, you'll abruptly stop, and the farmer will make this noise like he's clutching his chest about to have a fucking heart attack. I hate stamina limits in general, but not even having a little thing in the HUD to tell you that your farmer couldn't outrun a wild Jim Sterling? Just come the fuck on! Everything is wrong. Just everything. The music is a bunch of terrible, lazy loops that you could probably find on a royalty-free site somewhere. Inside the police station, you find Otis, and Otis is... Well, he's Otis, and he's in jail. I assume he's a criminal, and you can't kill him, I tried. The game doesn't like that. I found out his name so he isn't a stranger anymore. You might think I'm skipping over things, and I am, but those things are just more awful zombie combat and nothing else. The whole police station, same old thing, occasionally broken up by the game telling you to get keys and things. Otis was sure glad to be free, but what would we do now? The radio said there was a safe house in an old theater nearby. We could go there, but the city streets were too dangerous to travel on foot. My new friend Otis had a plan. Otis had an 18-wheeler cab in the impound lot. He would get it and pick me up, and then we'd make for the theater. My job was to cover him from the roof. Oh boy, it's a sniper cover mission with an AI partner. What could possibly go wrong in this game with already stellar AI and hit detection, besides everything you would expect? No, wait, first we have to go get a sniper rifle from the police armory. But no, first we have to get the access code to it from the computer lab upstairs, a secure location, where something like that would obviously be kept. Otis was ready to run to the truck. I didn't have many bullets in the sniper rifle, so I had to be careful. I couldn't let a single one of them get to him. I aim for the head like an idiot. Otis, even though he has a magnum and can headshot, chooses not to. <laughs> no. 
Now, imagine the hackiest, laziest thing this game could possibly do. Go on. You're never gonna guess, because you, my dear viewer and only friend, are not capable of knowing what comes next. No man should be capable of knowing what comes next. Otis barely made it to his truck when a bunch of them attacked. I saw him wave and yell something. All I caught was theater. And then he drove away. I was alone again. I had to find another way to get to the theater. It wasn't too far, but the streets were crawling with the living dead. I decided to get there through the sewers. It's another sewer level. One sewer level is lazy. Two sewer levels is open hostility. And I would talk about what happens in the sewer level, but nothing fucking happens. Theater was barricaded like a fortress, but everyone was dead. Those things got to them. I needed some rest. But first, 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 I had some business to deal with. The theater is supposed to be a shelter, right? This is where we were supposed to get to. It's full of zombies. <sighs> Maybe they shouldn't keep all these dead bodies in here. You know, just saying. After you clear up the theater, Otis comes back in his truck. Oh, he really does care. He's a criminal with the heart of gold. I asked Otis where we were going. A trucker on his CB radio told him about a city of the living, completely surrounded by water and walled off from those creatures. We had to find a way there. Our best bet was to go by boat. We headed for the docks. Freedom was in sight. Otis would go down and find a boat while I covered him. Now, I understand getting Otis to his truck, but now he's just kind of there, and you're protecting him so you can both get to a boat, but he's useless in the context of this being a video game. This level isn't completely useless, and here's why. It gives me a chance to explain why the level design is so fucking bad. Most of this game is running through corridors or sewers or alleyways and trying to kill zombies, but there's a part in this level that I think best exemplifies how the people making this had no fucking idea what they were doing. On one of the useless side quests that pad out the game's running time, you enter a building and have to navigate around broken staircases in order to get to the roof. Because of the way it's inorganically shoved into this area, there's one path you can take to get to the other side. After your mission objective is done, you need to take that path back. But this time, there are zombies coming after you from the opposite direction, and so they have to take the same route that you took to get there. And they do. They just march single file, and I can just pick them off long before they ever get to me. This isn't scary, and then you finally go outside and- OH MY FUCK! It won't stop screaming, it's not attacking me, but it's terrifying! And it won't fucking die, it's- Oh wait, no, I just aimed a sniper rifle bullet dead center in its forehead, and the Magnum took care of it. Shit, I thought this game might start getting scary. We barely got out of there alive. It was like they knew we were trying to get away. I was relieved, but Otis wasn't doing so good. I could tell they had got to him. Is it the fact that he's covered in blood and bite marks? Could something other than a zombie have done that to him? They got to me. Kill me before I turn into one of them. What are you waiting for? Do it! Do it now! It took a while, but I finally made it to the City of the Living. People from the city were trying to get supplies across the river, but the drawbridge wasn't working. They asked me for help, and I just couldn't say no. If you thought the sewer level was hacky, it's time for the turret section. Of course this game has a turret section, and of course it's shit. You don't have a crosshair, and anything you're firing at is obscured by the muzzle flash. And the hit detection is already dog shit. But this isn't the thing that bothers me the most. This is. Did you catch it? Let's take a closer look. Do you notice the zombies coming up from the water? The water that surrounds the city and keeps the zombies out? A trucker on his CB radio told him about a city of the living, completely surrounded by water. Holy shit, they got across the river. Oh, look at that. I don't even have to blow the place out, the fucking stenches did it for me. This was a pretty big plot point in the movie, how the zombies found out that they could do this, and this game is a prequel. 
In fact, the entire climax of the movie happens because the dead finally cross the river. Those cool shots of the dead rising out of the water, which were even used in the trailer, which even comes with this game. Well, th these are the oh shit moments of the movie. But fuck that, we got a video game to shit out and let's ignore it. The men at the gate took me to meet an important man named Mr. Kaufman. Mr. Kaufman was mighty impressed with how I helped out at the bridge. He was so impressed that he offered me a job on the spot. You see, there was this big, tall skyscraper called Fiddler's Green, filled with fancy rich people apartments. He wanted to fix it up again, but those flesh eaters had infested it. He said the cleanup was almost done. Only a few pockets of the things were left. It sounded dangerous, but he'd give me a nice place to live and lots of money to do it. Besides, Mr. Kaufman said that by doing this, I'd be helping out a lot of people. Good people, just like me. So you start off at the garage of Fiddler's Green, clear it out, and then you move to the tower itself, which isn't nearly as impressive as it was in the movie, and you end up back to where you were in the opening cutscene after you clear out one of the penthouses. And that's how I got from the farm to the top of Fiddler's Green. Inside the city, life went on. Kaufman opened his fancy tower. So I guess Farmer's now one of the elite rich people of Fiddler's Green that everyone hates? It sounded dangerous, but he'd give me a nice place to live and lots of money to do it. Okay, I can see what's happening. This is a post-zombie apocalypse American dream, where you work hard for a wealthy businessman, and he in turn makes you rich too, and there are no repercussions whatsoever. Oh, and also you're a drug addled gun-toting lunatic. I'm out, are we done? Oh, thank fuck. That was only like a four-hour game, but when three hours and 45 minutes of that is spent trying to outsmart the broken hit detection or get the AI to do something funny, you know it's a bad time. I doubt you'll ever even find this game, let alone play it, but I hear there's an Xbox version, and believe it or not, there are people playing it online right now. Don't be those people.